Gentlemen, Wonder get here you know sometimes you just sit back and think about your life and go what the fuck happened and don't get me wrong I'm the happiest I've ever been but never in a million years would I have imagined myself in this situation yeah I mean look okay here's the thing I'm a black woman from Virginia and I'm not talking about the nice Virginia I'm talking about Virginia I went to an HBCU, historically black college. I went to Hampton University. Yes. I pledged the first black sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. So I got a lot of black going on. And I also did the show Finding Your Roots with Dr. Gates. Yeah. And he found that I actually come from a line of free Negroes. Yeah, we weren't even one year slave. <laughs> and now I'm married to a white French woman and I have two white kids. <laughs> Fucked up my legacy. minority in my own home <laughs> and y'all know I talk a lot of shit but at the end of the day I take care of white people <laughs> and my kids my kids are white white you know I mean blonde hair blue eyes I I'm talking frozen you know <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, I love my family. I love my family dearly. You know, and, and, I, I, and I wish we could live in a colorblind society. Yeah. But, but I gotta admit, I see shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I see shit. I notice it, you know, every morning I get up and I go downstairs and I, I'm making my tea and I look over at my family. all these white people get in my house. <laughs> I walk around my house, I look at the pictures on my wall, and they're all white people. <laughs> this must be how the Obamas feel. A mom, when a mom cooks dinner, it's, it don't mean anything, right? It just means a mom's cooking dinner. But when I cook, oh, it means some shit. When I cook, I feel like the help. <laughs> That's why I started buffet at the house. I was like, fuck it, you know what? No, uh-uh, y'all come make your own damn plates. I, I cook, but I ain't serving you motherfuckers. <laughs> Make your own damn plate. <laughs> I like to cook. I have a passion for cooking. 
right? And, and, and I do most of the cooking in the house. I do because, you know, my, my, my wife's cooking. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like her food, um, it tastes like necessity. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you have her food, you like, you gotta eat. But my food, I, t I put some thought into it, you know? I go through and I, I chop up all my vegetables, make sure they're equal size and all that. My wife, she ain't chopping shit. <laughs> if the recipe calls for a carrot, in goes a carrot. <laughs> and then we sitting at the table like we playing the game, like, ooh, <laughs> I wonder who's gonna get the carrot. Is it you? You get the carry? <laughs> Whenever we have a dinner party, my friends always call me before they RSVP. Hey, who's cooking? <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm cooking. Okay, all right, all right. We'll be there. Because when I cook, they enjoy themselves, you know? And I get compliments. They say stuff like, Mm, girl, this is good. Woo, you put your foot in this. That's good. You put your foot in this. When my wife cooks, they're like, mm, girl, you put your foot in this. <laughs> I think she put her foot in this. Kiss, man. Okay, okay, here's the thing. Now, you know, my wife is French, so they call her Mama, right? And they call me Mommy. Now, my daughter, Olivia, the Mama, perfect. Mama. Bisous, Mama. Bonjour, Mama. Coucou, Mama. But you know what she called me? Mammy. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that stings, ah. I was like, Olivia, sweetheart, it's mommy, mommy, mammy, mammy, ooh. <laughs> I just had to hum a Negro spiritual, you know? I, I was like, mm hmm. Cause that's what you gotta do. You gotta hum a Negro spiritual sometime to stop from killing somebody. Cause you know, cause you can't beat your kids. You can't. Well, I can't, they're white. Are you kidding me? You can't be beating white kids. You know how much time I get? So I gotta leave the country just to beat my kids. I'd be like, you know what? Get the damn car, get the damn car. This don't make no sense. I got to drive down to Tijuana just to teach you how to say mommy. <laughs> so now, Olivia, she can say mommy, she can say it. But the problem is my wife, you know, trying to fit in, started calling me boo. Yeah, she heard my black friends call each other boo. So she gonna start calling me boo. Fucking it up. <laughs> she says like she trying to scare me or something. <laughs> boo, I'm like, what the fuck, hey! So my kids heard her call me boo, so they just put it together. Oh, she must be mommy boo. Yeah, that's my nickname now, Mommy Boo. I hate it. It sounds racist. Don't it sound racist? It's too close to spook. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You racist ass babies, what the fuck? <laughs> mommy Boo. And Olivia's gotten worse. Yeah, so now, cause she, she's putting like, you know, she's even chopped that down. Now it's just Mom Boo. Hey, Mom Boo. 
okay, my boo. I'm like, my, it's getting worse. What the fuck? Man, I sound like a character from the Jungle Book, you know? <laughs> my wife is like, oh, I think my boo is cute. It's cute. Yeah, you think it's cute because you don't know what it feels like to be walking through the grocery store and then your little girl runs up to you with a bunch of bananas like, here, my boo. <laughs> black people look at me when they hear that. I say, they, they're like, mom, boo. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> and I can't explain this stuff to my wife. I can't explain racial shit to her. I can't have this conversation with her. She's French. She's French, she doesn't know American history. I mean, okay, yeah, she's American citizen now, but she just learned enough to pass the test. <laughs> so I can't have these conversations with her. Cause one, she might say something stupid. And I love her. I don't wanna have to leave this woman. <laughs> it's like when the whole Ferguson thing was going on. You know, I was watching it and everything, but what I do is I can't watch shit like that with her, you know? So I had a TV on and she's out. And, and so I'm watching it, I'm like, fuck this, because I gotta watch it standing up so I can watch the door to see when she's coming. <laughs> cracker ass, cracker ass crackers. That's right, burn that shit down. Fuck these motherfuckers. Oh shit, here she come, here she come, here she come. Yeah, just watching some Shark Tank. Just watching some Shark Tank. <laughs> Ferguson, man. And let me just say, I am pro-cop. I, I respect what they do. You know, I, I, I thank them for, the, for what they do. In theory, I am pro-cop. However, in reality, I just know that there are some cops who just should not be cops. Period. But just like in all professions, there are just people who are just shitty at their jobs. There's somebody burning fries at McDonald's right now. <laughs> Even you know somebody at your job, you're like, how is this motherfucker? You go to work on money, you like this. This motherfucker still here? <laughs> Y'all ain't fired Dave yet? Are you kidding me? Dave naps and plays Candy Crush all day. What the fuck? How is Dave still here? What happened, y'all? How did we get here? No, wait a minute, let me take that back. How did the Republicans get here? What the fuck happened to the Republicans? If you know a Republican, just give them a hug. Just, oh, it's okay, baby. I've never seen politics this low. I mean, talk, you're, you're talking about, you know, each other's wives and, and it, it, we have to sit there and listen to them talk about the size of Donald Trump's hands. What the fuck? I mean, they are just like one step above doing your mama jokes. <laughs> and I have never in my life watched a presidential debate and had the thought cross my mind. Is he about to take out his dick? <laughs> Girl, I thought he was gonna pull out his penis. Oh, sweet Jesus. Are actually falling for Donald Trump. 
For a wall? Really? That's all he has to do, just promise you a wall? I'm gonna build a big wall around our borders and I'm gonna make Mexico pay for it. And they were like, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna build a wall. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I'll build a fucking wall. What the fuck is a wall gonna do now that we have the El Chapo Memorial Tunnel? that wall. They take it the tunnel. <laughs> You're gonna have Mexicans popping up like gophers. <laughs> Border Patrol's gonna be playing the biggest game of whack-a-mole you ever seen. <laughs> Shit. Fuck that wall. I was in Costco the other day and a Mexican popped up. <laughs> hola, motherfucker, hola. I also get why Donald Trump and Bernie are hot. Yeah, I get it. I get because at least they're saying something new. You know, Republicans are always the same shit. We're gonna let the rich keep their money and then it'll trickle down <laughs> to everybody else. Which will never work. It doesn't work. Why? because nothing good trickles. <laughs> nothing good trickles. If you go to the doctor and he tells you that you have a trickle, ooh, you in trouble. You have to see a specialist. Even in your home, if you're at home and you're like, what the fuck is this trickling down my bathroom wall? What is... Okay. What is that trickling? That don't smell like wealth. What is that? What is... That shit, I got some shit trickling down my wall. Shit trickles. That Bernie, man. Bernie always looks like he just been thrown out of a bar after last call. <laughs> I said last call, get out of here, Bernie. She makes a lot of great points, but no one really hears them because they're too busy concerned about what she's wearing. I just said, man, that was a good point Hillary just made. Ah, I don't know. I think her pockets are way too big on that pantsuit. Her pockets, didn't you hear what she just said? Ah, I can't hear her. Her pockets are like catcher's mitts around my ears. I can't hear shit. Just too distracted, I can't hear anything. <laughs> we judge Hillary on her, her outfits, her hair, and yet Bernie Sanders been running around that same damn suit since day one. <laughs> we don't say shit about Bernie's suit. At the end of the day, Bernie Sanders just takes his suit, ties it up in a ball, and puts it on the end of a hobo stick, and just off to the next city. I got 
tell you, it would, it would be great to have, a, have a, a female president. It would. Somebody to look out for us. We like a female president. Because what happened, ladies? What the fuck is going on? We're actually going backwards. Yeah, we're having more things taken away from us. You know, and we, and we can't even get equal pay for equal work. What the fuck? Although, I think that's bullshit because I think women should be paid more. Yeah. We should be paid more because we have more shit to buy. <laughs> we have more shit to buy. We do. Cosmetics, what the fuck? Billion dollar industry, and we gotta do all this shit. It's Halloween every day for us. <laughs> Feminine products. That shit should be free. Feminine products should be free. Okay, now, wait a minute now. It's just the basics now. now if you want all the bells and whistles, you know, wings and shit, that's, that's on you. <laughs> Makeup, feminine products. Now what, then we need a big ass handbag to carry all that shit around. Men don't need any, men just get, boom, wallet, phone, that's all they need. We got these big ass handbags we got to carry around. And, and they're getting ridiculous. Bags so big, look like you're running away from home. <laughs> My neighbor, she has some beautiful handbags, right? And I like to tease her, I like to fuck with her. You know, like, like her and her husband, they always get into little spats, right? So one morning, I was looking out my window, you know, and I, I saw her. She was running out the door with her big handbag. So I ran out the door. I was like, that's right, girl. That's right, sweetheart. That's right. You go. You go. You said enough of his shit. You have had enough of his shit. That's right. And she was like, bitch, I'm late for work. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought she was heading to the shelter. I Big ass bag, I'm sorry. I thought today was your day. <laughs> Another thing I like about Hillary, at least she's stronger on, on gun control. Yeah. And what happened, guys? Why haven't we been able to ban assault weapons? What happened with that? You know, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not anti-gun. I grew up around guns. You know, my father's in the military, so, you know, we, we, we had guns in the house, you know. My, it was, it, my, my father, not my mother. I don't want you to think my mother was walking around the house packing or anything, you know. <laughs> Eat your peas. <laughs> so maybe shoot them peas off your plate. So I'm not saying take away all guns. I just think there's some guns you shouldn't be able to have. You know, like the same way I can't drive a tank, you shouldn't be able to have an assault weapon. <laughs> That's all, they're gonna tell me, oh, well, we can't ban assault weapons. Are you kidding me? As much damage as, as they've done, and you tell me you can't ban assault weapon, but you can ban a baby stroller because it chopped off the tip of little Billy's index finger. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, poor Billy. He can't point. I, I, don't, I don't know what he wants. <laughs> I don't know where he wants me to look. And... And my heart just breaks whenever he tries to do itsy bits and spider. It's just, oh. <laughs> fucking kidding me. Like, and, and it's bullshit about, oh, I need, I need an assault weapon to protect my home. Where's your home? The Middle East? <laughs> That's what I think we should do. The type of gun that you should be allowed to have should be determined by where you live. Yeah. Yeah, now like say if you live out in, in the country somewhere, out in the woods, some rural area, whatever. You're like, man, okay, you know, you got animals out there and shit and, you know, so okay, yeah, here's a high power rifle and yeah, take, you know what, you might have some hillbillies. Let me get you some more shit. <laughs> 
I am terrified of hillbillies. I do not fuck with hillbillies, I'm telling you. Two things I'm scared of, hillbillies and snakes. Oh my God. If I ever saw a hillbilly with a sack of snakes, oh. That is my worst nightmare. So, yeah, so you live out in the woods, I'm gonna give you some shit. You take all this. Yeah. And so you live in a bad neighborhood. You know, bad neighborhood where you just have that random shopping cart on the corner and there's no grocery store within three miles. <laughs> you live in a bad neighborhood? Okay, here you go. I'm gonna give you a nine millimeter. There you go. There you go. You get this. Okay, yeah. You know, you might need some night vision goggles because. I saw a shopping cart. <laughs> you live in a neighborhood with a season or fruit in the name. Winter cherry grove. Spring orchard meadow. Take this baseball bat and Take your ass home. If you live in a cul-de-sac, if you live in a cul-de-sac, what the, shut the fuck up and lock your door. Don't nothing happen in a damn cul-de-sac. And it's not like you're gonna get sneak attack. You see them coming. And if some shit goes down, you'll get their license plate when they leave it. <laughs> Fucking cold to say. But you know what we should be caring about? We should be caring about the things that are killing us all. Our food, water, air, yeah. Americans, uh, Americans love food. We love food. Can't get enough food. Bad food, too. Boy, we cannot run out of ideas to put in the pizza crust, can we? <laughs> we cannot run out of ideas to put in the pizza crust. We ain't gonna be happy until they put the hot wings right into the pizza crust. <laughs> <laughs> we love shitty food. Now they got a deep dish pizza, right? Deep dish pizza wrapped in bacon. What the fuck? They call it the Baconator. They should call that you fat fucking fuck you. <laughs> you fat fucking fuck you. That's what they should call that. We need to care about our food, man. GMOs, GMOs, right? When I start hearing about GMOs, I notice the bees start dying. I would walk outside and just see a, a huddle of bees out, out my, on, on the sidewalk and they weren't flying. They just was all walking around like confused, like little crackhead bees, you know, like shit. What the fuck are y'all putting on your plans, man? Yeah, fuck me up. I can't fly. I don't know where I am. I hate my life. I'm just gonna go crawl in your pool and drown myself, shit. <laughs> I'm in the pool trying to fish bees out. They're like, no, fuck you, it's over. You're on your own. We need to be more concerned about our food. Farm-raised fish. We have destroyed over 90% of the large fish population. Yeah, so now everything's farm-raised. You know how crazy that sounds? That sounds crazy. Like, think about, do you ever remember being at school going, and on that farm he had some fish. e i e i o. I 
don't know what tilapia is, but I don't fuck with it. I do not fuck with tilapia. Especially tilapia from China. I don't fuck with tilapia. The fuck is tilapia? I bet you four years ago, tilapia had feet. <laughs> tilapia probably was walking around, stepped in some GMO, the feet shrunk up, and they was like, oh shit, I better roll my ass in the ocean. And I have to be concerned about what I put in my body. I'm, I'm a breast cancer survivor, so, yeah. And here's a, here's a crazy thing. What, what, what was a blessing, I found out about the breast cancer through a breast reduction. Yeah, I went in for a breast reduction. You know, because I had really big titties. I mean, they were, they was giving me all kind of problems, back problems and, just, you know, big titty women problems, you know. <laughs> big titty girls that I'm talking about. You go shopping and you go reach for something on the top shelf and you knock everything down on the bottom shelf. <laughs> You're like, boom, boom, boom. oh shit, oh Lord, what's, is this real crystal down here? Was this? <laughs> it's real crystal. You go to the movie theater, you order the big bucket of popcorn. Right? And you and you like, mm, I don't think, did I eat all that popcorn? I don't think I did. And then you get home, take your bra off, popcorn just fall everywhere. You like, oh, I knew I ain't eat all that popcorn. <laughs> Here it is. Baby, you wanna watch a movie? I got some popcorn. <laughs> Yes, I went in, I was diagnosed, they found it in the pathology of the breast reduction. So I was like, all right, because I have such a strong history of breast cancer on my mom's side. I was like, I ain't taking any chances. I ain't fucking around. I went for the double mastectomy and now I got, you know, I'm all healthy, got new boobs. Hey, 52 year old with the titties of a 22 year old. And it's taking me some time to get used to the new titties, I gotta tell you. No, because I was used to the old ones, you know. I had broken them in. <laughs> you know, I would get up in the morning brushing my teeth. You know, and old titties would just. <laughs> hey. <laughs> But new titties, I don't know, man. New titties, I'm brushing my teeth. And new titties just like. <laughs> Who you new titties up to? New titties want to do 22-year-old things. They want to hang out. They want to go do things. I got, I got to show new titties my ID every now and then. Like, hey, I'm 52 new titties. I go to the bar, order, you know, I'm going to order a glass of wine. New titties just jump up. Shot, 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 shot. <laughs> They're not doing shots. <laughs> Gotta stay healthy, man. I had to go get a colonoscopy. Now I have to look for a new doctor. <laughs> uh, this is what happened. So I went for my colonoscopy, right? And, uh, and, and you know, they put you on the table. So, you know, I'm up there on the table and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm knocked out and and all of a sudden I hear, Wanda, Wanda. I wake up and the doctor's standing over here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, he goes um, Wanda, uh, look, uh, everything's okay. 
everything's fine, but um, I, I want you to look at the monitor right there. If you just look at that monitor, there's this one area. I'm looking at the monitor. <laughs> looking at him, I'm like, uh. <laughs> Is that the live feed? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I want, no, no, no. You're not supposed to wake me up while you still digging around in my asshole. <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? I'm not supposed to remember any of this. <laughs> and he's like, well, it's just the one area I wanted you to look at. Screenshot, motherfucker, screenshot. <laughs> if you look out and shoot your camera across the room. <laughs> Give me some more of that Michael Jackson shit. <laughs> when I came to and got dressed, I went to his office and I was like, look, you might as well just give me my records because I'm never coming back. <laughs> never coming back. He was like, but why? I don't understand. What's the problem? I was like, you woke me up in the middle of the procedure. What the fuck was that? He's like, well, I just wanted you to look at this other. Why? I didn't go to ass school. You went to ass school. <laughs> this is your job. I don't know what the inside of an asshole is supposed to look like. <laughs> why are you getting a second opinion from me? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That's your job. Yeah, I can see if you looked up there and saw a rubber chicken. <laughs> My job. <laughs> I gotta stay healthy, man. I gotta, I gotta stay healthy, especially for my kids, you know. And my daughter needs it. My daughter needs it. Boy, I don't know what the hell happened to her. You know, my wife and I, neither one of us are like girly girls. We're not girly girls. But the, my daughter, man, she's so like, you know, into Barbies and princesses. And, and we, had, we had to stop the Barbie thing. I was like, you know what? I'm not buying her any more Barbies. Fuck that. Uh-uh. Because I thought about it. Really, what does Barbie do? You know, really. I mean, we got her the, the Barbie with the, with the dream house with the working elevator. What are we teaching her? That one day somebody's going to buy you a dream house with a working elevator? <laughs> I'm looking at my son's toys, Transformers and, you know, Legos. He's building things, being creative. His Transformers, you know, they're, they're a car one minute and they turn into a robot. What the fuck does Barbie do? What, what does Barbie transform into? A hoe. That's what Barbie transforms into. A hoe. Fuck a dream house. Barbie should come with a pimp, a corner, and a pole. Barbie ain't nothing but a starter kit for the real housewives. That's it. My daughter, she thinks she's a princess. You know, she's all into that. And I messed up, and we took her, we took them to uh, Disneyland. And, and, and look, I had to take them to Disneyland because they were going to France that summer, and I knew my mother-in-law had plans to take them to Euro Disney. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> I refused to let their first Disney experience be in Europe. I was like, uh-uh. They're not gonna go to Disney and eat baguettes and wear berets. I was like, fuck that. <laughs> They're going to the U.S. Disney and walk around with a giant turkey leg. <laughs> USA. <laughs> and my daughter, she lost it when we got to the princess castle. You know, because that's where all they, they all hang out. You know, so she gets in there and she's like, <gasps> 
because she just lost her shit. Because, you know, it's still you know, Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, they all there. And, and, and she is just in her world. She's going and hugging them and taking pictures with them and tears in her eyes. And she's talking to them. And I'm just sitting there watching like, wow, they're really treating these women like they're that character. They bring them tea. Somebody's fanning them. They, she got security around them and shit. And I'm like, wow. What a shitty job. <laughs> no, because you know, you're a princess now. But when you clock out, <laughs> you gotta take that long hike to the employee parking lot. <laughs> hey, hey, your, your horse and carriage has now turned into a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> and the AC ain't working. You gotta roll down your window with a socket wrench cause the handle broke off. Mm, the clock has struck 12, bitch. It is over. It is over. <laughs> Olivia's only seven and she's already figured it out about appearances and looks. Old princess thing. She's already figured it out. So, because I was getting getting out of the shower, right? And I was in a in a vulnerable position, you can say. You know, I was bent over, <laughs> toweling off, and you know, Esther was hanging out. <laughs> yeah. For for those of you who don't know, you know, this this fat roll right here. This is this is Esther. Yeah. That's Esther. Uh, Esther's favorite things in life, bread and alcohol. <laughs> Loves it. She's mad right now. Hurry up, get the fuck off the stage. I want a daiquiri. <laughs> so I'm toweling off, right? And I look up and there's Olivia staring right at me. I'm like, oh, hey, sweetheart. How you doing? You know, I'm toweling off. And she comes up. She's like, my boo, you have a big, 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 big stomach. <laughs> and Esther goes, break her little wrist. Take a hand. I was like, wow, Olivia, boy. Okay. Jeez, uh, boy, you really uh, might be true there. You know, uh, my mommy boo probably did pick up a few pounds. You know, was, we had a harsh winter, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but boy, you really, that was a lot of bigs you put in there. Did you, was that necessary, all those bigs? I mean, let's think about it. You say, you say big, 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 big stomach. That's eight bigs. That's too many bigs. Just one big. I, I got it. <laughs> and she could tell that she hurt my feelings. And she went, oh, you're still pretty, though. <laughs> that was scary. Yeah. Yeah, right? I was like, uh, Olivia, no, no. I said, you know, beauty is on the inside. It's about who you are as a person on the inside, not on the outside, okay? It's about treating people with respect and, and being loving, that's, that's beauty. And she went, mm-hmm. <laughs> and walked away. I was like, oh my God, she's gonna be one of those little mean girls. And I thought, I was like, now do I go leg sweep her? <laughs> Or let her have a life lesson. Does she learn a life lesson? And I said, I'm going to let her learn a life lesson. Because I, cause she has little fat kids at her school. Yeah. Because I know one day she's going to come home from school and she's going to be upset. And I'll be there for her. I will be there for her. And I'll be like, Olivia, sweetheart, you okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you sure, honey? You okay? Uh -huh. I'm like, okay. You, you, you know, did 
Did, did, did you, you want to talk about it? No. I, I, okay, you sure? Because uh, I know, you know, you have a big, 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 big lip. <laughs> You're still pretty, though. What happened, man? What I started off, I, I didn't even want kids, you know? And now I have twins, you know, a boy and a girl. And it's just like how Olivia is all girl, Lucas, all boy, all boy. You know, plays with his penis, you don't wash his ass good, you know? <laughs> Real man. <laughs> and the butt wiping thing, my goodness, I didn't realize how bad it was. We, I was running his bath water, right? I'm running the bath water and everything. I was like, okay, Lucas, go ahead, man, get undressed, come on. So he's getting undressed and I hear, I'm like, what was, what fell? Did something, did you drop something? What happened, what was that? And I looked down at his underwear, I was like, what the? You didn't feel that. Lucas, you didn't feel that. How could you not, you know what? Get in the car, get in the damn car. Get in the damn car. So make no sense. I got to drive down to Tijuana. <laughs> just to teach you how to wipe your ass. You are ridiculous, you know that? What? Who the hell put this big ass wall up here? <laughs> So what we did with Lucas, we said, okay, you know what? Until you learn how to clean yourself good, we're gonna check you just to make sure you're doing it right. He didn't like that, so he, so he, he, he was on it. He was doing better, you know? So I remember a couple months ago, he was in the bathroom and uh, he was on, in the bathroom downstairs and, and this particular bathroom, it is a, it's mirrors on both walls and you know, it's black tile. I mean, I know it sounds tacky, but it's beautiful, trust me, it's gorgeous. <laughs> I see some gay guys in here like this. It's gorgeous, trust me. So he's in the bathroom, and all of a sudden I hear, Mommy Boo, Jafini. So I go in the bathroom, and I'm like, okay, son, go ahead, bend down. Let, let, let me check you, let me check you. So he, he bends down, you know, he's bent down. So I go get the paper, and I'm like, all right, all right Lucas, good job, man. You're doing, you're doing better. And I caught myself in the mirror. <laughs> I bet you Harry Tubman is rolling around in her grave right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I hear my wife, baby, ça va? Everything okay? I'm like, ah, that's how I got here. I fell in love with that motherfucker. That's what happened. <laughs> and my kids speak French. Yeah, my kids speak French. They go to French school. Yeah, I pay for them to go to school to learn to not to be able to communicate with me. <laughs> Pussy makes you crazy. <laughs> Pussy makes you crazy. It's gotta be it. I learned how to snowboard, trying to impress my wife. Now, she grew up skiing on the French Alps. All right, my black ass, ain't been no damn ski lodge or snowboard or nothing like that. We ain't had that shit. I the only thing we did was like, you know, when the ditch froze over, we put on our church shoes and went sliding. <laughs> and now, you know, the kids, they're of age to be skiing and snowboarding, so she's booking trips for them to go. 
You know, she's like, baby, I, I got a trip, and I'm, we're going to take the kids snowboarding, okay? We're going we're gonna to start skiing, so we're going to take the kids skiing, okay? And I was like, I ain't going. <laughs> and she's like, but, but what? I mean, come on. You're good. You like the snowboard. You like the snowboard, right? It's like, mm-mm. I like pussy. <laughs> That was all smoke and mirrors, babe. I got you. Doing that shit no more? I almost killed myself out there. You gotta stay connected as a couple. You do. My wife is good about that. She keeps us connected, man. But the only thing is, she does it with a surprise. You know, my wife, she, she, yeah, she likes to do surprises, which I don't like. I don't, I don't like the surprise thing. You got to let me know what we're doing, you know. But we'll get in the car, and I think we're, like, going one place. And I'm like, babe, the restaurant is this way. She's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I have a little surprise for you. Oh, and by the way, my wife doesn't even smoke. This is just how I see her. This is just in my head. <laughs> Booked us a room tonight at the resort, just the two of us, no kids, a little, little, little getaway for us, okay? Now, here's the thing. When you're 52, a surprise getaway feels more like a kidnapping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you just can't whisk me away like that. I have prescriptions. the shit I don't have. I'm like, I don't have my neti pot. I can't, what the fuck? I'm freaking out. I, I, gotta, I gotta text my friends, please help me. Uh, uh, nobody, my, am I too old for an Amber Alert? Please help. I'm, I'm on the 101 North with a crazy white French lady. Here she is. Please. You got to get away. You got to get away because it, it's hard. It's hard to, you know, have that intimacy and, you know, and hey, your naked time when you're home because the kids get in the way. The kids, they get up in the middle of the night. They run to your room. You're always listening out for them, you know, and like even if you do decide you want to do something, you're like, okay, the kids are asleep. You feel like you want to do something. Like, okay, yeah, all right, whatever, you know, then you got to take your pajamas off. You got to lay them out like a volunteer fireman. <laughs> So, like, something jump off, you can hurt him, get back into him, you know, like. Okay, all right. Okay, you ready? Okay, yeah, I love you. I love you, too. All right, get, put your leg. Oh, wait, wait, oh, shh, shh. <laughs> I, I heard somebody back. Kids, they come to your room, they wake you up, you know, they, they get up in the middle of the night, they run to your room. And our kids, they're no different, they do the same thing. You know, but I gotta tell you, uh, it, it took me some time to get used to that. It did, it took a while to get used to that. I mean, geez, I'm sorry, black woman. You're waking up in the middle of the night and see two little white kids staring at the foot of your bed. That's some scary shit, you know. And don't get me wrong, I know they mind, I love them to death, but I mean, it just took me it took off guard. You know, I'm sleeping, I wake up, it's like, ah, shit, okay, hey, hey, y'all, hey, hey, hey. 
You know, because that blonde hair and the moon hitting it and the, the blue eyes lit up and there's just two of them standing there. It's just like... <laughs> you know, it's almost like I can hear the music, you know. La, 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 You know what? When I think about it, I, I know exactly what happened. I know what happened to me. I know what happened. You know what? Progress. That's what happened. Look, I am now legally married to the woman I love <laughs> in all 50 states. I have two healthy, gorgeous, smart kids, and my name is on their birth certificate. Yeah. So you know what's happened? Progress. That's what happened. Yeah. And I'm so happy and so grateful. And I'm telling you, I mean, it's nothing more rewarding than, you know, with the kids. And, and my favorite time is, is the end of the day when they go to bed. <laughs> I love it. That's my favorite moment. All parents know that. Yeah. That favorite, when you, they put their ass to bed, that's my favorite moment. Because it's just like, yep. Made it through another one. <laughs> Got through another one. You know, and I love that. And I, I, I hate when I, when I miss that, you know. So I was downstairs one night and, you know, cleaning up after dinner, you know, being the help. And uh, <laughs> my wife came downstairs and she had already put the kids to bed. And I was like, oh, shoot, let me run upstairs and say goodnight before they fall asleep. You know, so I go upstairs and I go in Olivia's room. I'm like... Give her a kiss. I was like, good night, princess. You're still pretty. <laughs> and I go over to Lucas's room. I'm like, good night, Lucas. And I give him a kiss. And he goes, mommy boo? <laughs> yeah, baby. I can't see you. 